y'all, it's Pam with 44 Marketplace. I don't know what's going on with our, there we go. With 44 Marketplace and Creative Finishes by Pam, and you are getting an early morning live, which is something I don't usually do. I'm at the store this week, so this is gonna be quick and to the point. I am doing this to answer a few questions for a friend of mine who is having some problems with spraying. Uh, some things, they're the same no matter what sprayer you're using, and that's what we're going to go over very quickly this morning. Um, always, always, always read the instructions with um, your sprayer. Without a doubt, read the instructions. If you can hook up with somebody that's got more expensive with more expensive, more uh, experience with your sprayer, that's going to help you out a lot too because they can tell you the ins and outs and that kind of thing. But some things, it doesn't matter what sprayer you're using, these things matter. Um, my sprayer came with a viscosity cup that looks like this. Um, yours may come with something different. Every single time I spray, I use my viscosity test. I don't use my cup because I've sprayed with mine for years, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, but I do test mine. Something else that I use every single time, and it's without a doubt, I use these little strainers. For my paint uh, just to make sure that I have um, no lumps or anything that's going to clog up my sprayer because hey Dar, hey Pat, hey Lisa, uh, because I just want to make sure that I'm not going to have any problems with my sprayer when I'm spraying. Um, it doesn't matter if I'm spraying paint, slick stick, gator hide, top coat, general finishes, Sherwin-Williams, it really has no bearing whatsoever what I'm spraying. I always strain my paint, whether I use those strainers, some people use cheesecloth. Um, you can use whatever works for you. Whatever you're spraying, do that. I do have an Earl X 5500 spray station, but it really doesn't matter which sprayer you're using. Maybe you've got the Home Right Finish Max or whatever it is. Um, the strainers, I get them off of uh, Amazon. I'll put a link on here. Um, I've been using them for years and they are great. They're inexpensive and I'll put a link on here so you can see which ones I use. Uh, but it doesn't matter if you're using whatever. Make sure you always test the viscosity and make sure that you always strain your paint. The other thing to keep an eye on is make sure you're using the right product to dilute your paint if you need to for the type paint you have. Don't use mineral spirits with a water-based paint or something like that. Uh, Water-based paint, you can use Floetrol or you can use water. Whichever one works best for you, it is what it is. Um, I don't get anything if you buy an Earl-X sprayer. I just want everybody to know if you have questions about one, that's the one that I, I use. I've used it for years. This is a piece that I'm putting a clear coat on this morning. It's just going to be a quick tutorial because, like I say, I have to be at my store at 10 o'clock this morning to open it up. But I did want you guys to see... It's very simple and very easy, um, and it, it's something. Always, when you're aerating something, wear protection. Dixie Bell is no VOCs, but I don't care what you're aerating. You don't want it inside your lungs, so I do that. Um, my sprayer has a Teflon-coated cup, so it's real easy for cleanup, but always, always, always wear protection. That's why we've got this on this morning. Yeah, it's not great for your hair or your makeup, but it is great for your lungs, so that's what you're going to do. So while I'm spraying, um, watch what I'm doing because I, I'm going to demonstrate it for you, but there is some noise to the sprayer. I am going to have this on so you won't have to hear me talk, but I am going to tell you a couple things. When you're spraying, don't stop at the edge of your piece. Go past the edge and past the edge because if you stop at the edge of your piece, you'll have a pool of your product whether it's paint top coat whatever it is you'll have pooling here which if it's a top coat it can lead lead to crackling and things like that if it's paint it can lead to runs I mean there's a lot of things that can happen another thing to remember is when you're doing things try to keep your hand at the same level don't use your wrist to go back and forth use your arm to go back and forth because if you use your wrist then the sprayer is farther away here, close here, and farther away there. When you're painting something high, get on something. Get on a ladder and spray it because if you're trying to do it like this, reaching up and everything, you're not going to get a good finish. 
and <laughs> I know this is awesome this is a great look okay but at least nobody has to hear me talk if I've got this on but that's what we're gonna do we're just gonna do a quick top coat over this so that you guys can see it's a very easy thing to do and always remember typically top coats are a little thinner than paint so you want to dial down the amount of fluid coming out of your sprayer when you're doing top coats because otherwise you're gonna have a mess okay and I'm just telling you from experience you want to kind of dial it down like I say it is gonna be a little noisy because my sprayer is you know inside my paint booth and you can see I've got it lit up like a space station but I am gonna show you I'm gonna spray the side first and then I'm gonna spray the front a little bit but I'm not gonna bore you with spraying the whole thing but I just want you to see how quick and easy it is and typically I do one direction first and then I go back and do the other direction to make sure I get a good coat on there but now I do spray two coats so this will be the first coat and then we'll spray the second coat um, this evening after I close the store okay so everybody ready we're gonna spray Okay, so just that quickly, we have the side spray. Now we're going to move to the front. So that's it. We now have the front and the side sprayed. So um, we are used. How much top coat is used on a piece that size? Um, I usually, I, my gun holds 32 ounces, so I throw 32 ounces in there, and I've never used 32 ounces on a piece this size at all. Um, I just throw it in there because mine pulls from, mine is not gravity fed. This is mine. You can tell how much it's been loved. But I fill up my 32 ounce and I go, um, I just go at it. Mine adjusts the direction with this. This sprays almost in a circle. This sprays up and down. This sprays horizontally. And um, it's super quick cleanup. Um, you can see mine's Teflon coated. And uh, I mean, it it's, works like a charm. And now I'm not saying it's the best sprayer and everything. Some of the hardware can't be removed because this is a secretary and some genius uh, decided to wood putty over it so I can't take it off. 
If I do, I have to dig through the wood putty and I mess up the top of the uh, secretary that folds, folds out. This is an Erlex 5500 spray station um, that I've used for years. I guess you can tell from looking at it. It's been used for eight years. Uh, but I did just want to go over a couple of quick things for you guys because it's super easy. It is a game changer. Uh, if you notice a blemish in your clear coat after you spray it, don't mess with it while it's wet, okay? Just an FYI, don't mess with it while it's wet because then you can cause a boo-boo or whatever. If you notice a blemish, let it dry. Pull you out some 320 grain sandpaper. You can see mine's written on the back, 320 grain. Pull you some of this out and get it on there. How thick a coat could I put on? I put on a very thin coat. I would rather put on three thin coats than one thick coat because if you put on a thick coat then you have to worry about runs and you have to worry about pooling see all of the details that this piece has you could get pooling runs there's a million things that could happen if you put on a thick coat so you're so much better off to put on a thin coat and move on because it dries quickly i mean very 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 quickly so it dries quickly, and there you go. I keep mine in containers like this, Carmen. No, I don't use more clear coat spray than compared to a sponge. And the time element for me makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, I, I made my booth. I did a video on how to make the booth. I put a 10 by 10 pop-up tent up. I wrapped it in drop cloths that I have a drop cloth and um, cardboard on the floor and that's what I've used always. Do I clean my nozzle between coats? Absolutely. I am meticulous about cleaning, cleaning my sprayer. It doesn't look like it, but the inside of this thing, I take my, mine comes apart and I can clean it in less than five minutes. Do I need to thin the paint? Yes, I do thin the paint. I use maybe two ounces of water to eight ounces of paint, but no more than that. And a lot of colors take less than that. Top coats usually don't even take that much. Top coats like Gator Hide or something, maybe I use, I don't know, an ounce or two ounces of water to 16 ounces of top coat. Uh, glossy top coat from Dixie Belle needs no thinning at all. Flat clear coat needs no thinning at all. Sometimes with satin clear coat, um, because I'm notorious for opening it and letting it thicken up a little bit. Um, I do put maybe an ounce of water to 16 ounces of clear coat. But, I mean, most of them I don't have to. I do not like Floetrol. I do not like Floetrol in mine. Because Floetrol is thicker than water and chalk paint is already thick on its own right. So, personally, I don't like it. I know a lot of people use Floetrol and I have it in my booth. I have a whole gallon of it but I just don't care very much for Floetrol. And I know the rules, Floetrol only affects viscosity and water affects viscosity and color, but I don't use enough water to affect the color. I can keep my colors, I mean, I can spray them side by side, by side and brush right beside it and I don't have any color difference from using a sprayer with my little bit of water that I use in there. Does anybody else have any questions? No questions? Do you put my product? I keep my product in these tubs, so yes, I do. I don't put it back in the original container because once I've used it, I keep it in my cups. Here's a paint container. I have everything marked on the top what it is. Like this one happens to be slick stick. And so I have everything marked on there, and I know that if they're in these containers, I've already used them in the sprayer, so I've already had water in them. And I know that that's it. Yes, this one is a self-propelled sprayer. In fact, I'll show you guys what the base looks like. Well, I say that. This is what the base looks like. And you, it's got a little place where I can sit this right in there. Uh, but yes, this is mine. So, just wanted to give you guys, um, I've been corresponding with somebody that had questions about a sprayer. So I did want to go over this with you guys really quickly. Um, where do I get the containers? I get them from, I think Amazon as well. I'll put up 
links to the containers, to the strainers. The containers come separate from the lids, believe it or not. Um, I'll put up links to the containers and the lids because I get, I want to say like 50 or 100 of these containers at a time. And for some reason, the lids don't come in the same amount. Um, it's the weirdest thing. You know, it's like hot dogs and buns. They don't come in the same size pack. But um, I'm going to tell you, it makes such a difference speed-wise. And if you're like me and you're kind of instant gratification, the other thing that you can do, you can always throw a fan on it because I am notorious if I've got something that I'm under a time deadline for or I've got projects backed up. A lot of times, mine are all on rollers when they're in the booth. So a lot of times what I do is I'll put a fan on, on outside and once I get it sprayed and I can get one side of it dry with a fan, I'll throw it out of the booth and put the fan on it out there and put something else in. Yes, I'll put a link to my lights too because I do have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six lights. One of them I just turn on when I need detail work. So, um, they make all the difference. I don't know if you guys can see, but they're LED and they're amazing. The only problem I have is I spray paint on the lenses all the time and I have to clean them off. But that's just a personal problem. Okay, so I just wanted to check in with you guys. Yes, my sprayer is self-propelled. I am not connected to an air compressor. I started out with an air compressor, but it's not as mobile. And, you know, some jobs call for me getting outside and doing it and... I like mine. Mine weighs 13 pounds for the whole setup. Okay, you guys have a fabulous Tuesday. And remember, remember it's Taco Tuesday. Eat tacos.